In today's episode, we're gonna be talking about our top five tips to improve your in-car GoPro footage so you can create perfect onboard videos event after event. Coming up. What's up everyone, my name is Teddy and welcome to Realize TV where we create weekly videos about drifting and drift cars. So if it's your first time here, make sure to check out some of the other videos on our channel. In today's episode, I wanna focus primarily on onboard video using GoPro cameras. But first, let's talk about why using GoPros in motorsports is even important. Now this applies to any motorsports like time attack, road racing, drifting, or even spirited driving on a Sunday afternoon. And one of the obvious reasons for using GoPros is to create cool videos that you can share on YouTube and on Facebook and show off to all your friends what a good time you had at the track or how awesome your driving is. But the most important reason that I think every motorsports driver should have a GoPro in their car is for debriefing reasons. If you've got a GoPro in your car for every motorsports event you go to, recording every single session you drive, then you can watch all that footage back when you get home and unload everything and you can catch any little or big mistakes that you made and then you can easily make those corrections at your next event and become a better driver more quickly. So let's jump right into our top five tips to improve your in-car GoPro footage starting right now. Number one, be organized. Now organization also means protecting your gear. So I use a Pelican IM2050 to store all my GoPro accessories. Now everything goes in the box nice and neatly. I've got access to everything that I need. Not only that, but it's foam and everything stays nice and protected. And I can just bring this case as it is to a track day. And I know I've got everything I need right in the box. So if you look inside the case, everything is super organized. And this is really important for when you get to a track day, you don't wanna be fumbling around for any of your equipment or any of your stuff. You wanna have everything at your fingertips ready to go so you can spend less time setting cameras up and more time driving. Now on top of that, I also added an extra layer of security on my GoPro by adding a lens cap. Since these don't come with lens cap stock, it's just always nice to have a lens cap when the camera's not going, just to make sure your lens is nice and safe. So what I keep in the case isn't anything too crazy. I keep two USB chargers so I can keep my batteries charged. Wherever I decide to go, if I'm doing a two day event or whatever, I'm gonna wanna charge my batteries overnight and I wanna make sure that I have everything that I need to run the GoPros in this case. In here, I also keep my extra batteries and an external charger for the GoPro batteries, which we'll go over that in a bit. I keep an assortment of GoPro mounts in the case, uh, just in the event that I want to mount a camera somewhere that I've never done before. I've got everything I need so I can do new camera angles on the fly if I decide to do that. Next up, I keep a pair of these USB-C GoPro cables just so I can keep the cameras charged up wherever I am. And then last but not least, obviously, my assortment of GoPros. And I'm gonna be linking some of this stuff today in the description down below so you guys can kind of check it out for yourself. You don't have to fumble around the internet and search for everything. I'm gonna make a nice list that shows you everything that we use to create our videos. Number two, and this is a huge one, come prepared. This is a scenario I see happen all the time and it even happens to me. You get to track, you gotta set up your pits and you have every intention of setting your cameras up, but then the first session happens and then, so you go out and do that and whatever, it's a warm up, it's no big deal. And then you get back and then your friends show up and you start chatting and oh look, the next session happens and you didn't get a chance to put your cameras in. Next thing you know, it's lunch or the day is completely over, you never got your cameras in your car and now you're going home on the drive home and you're like, oh damn, I should've got the cameras going next time. And the next time it happens all over again. So what's the solution? Set your camera up the night before. Now that includes setting up your camera angles, doing all your camera settings, making sure your card is formatted, make sure all your batteries are charged so that all you have to do when you get to track is hit the record button and start driving. All the hard work is done for you the night before. All you have to do now is show up and drive and you don't have to be messing with your camera on the day of the track event. All right, now being prepared doesn't just end with preparing stuff the night before. It actually also includes preparing stuff that's gonna happen throughout the day. The big one being battery changes. So because a single battery probably isn't gonna last you all day, I recommend carrying at least two spare batteries. And here's my tip for you. You should keep these batteries in your center console. What that does is makes them super easy to find. You don't have to go fumbling around any of your stuff to go find the batteries. They're right here in your center console. You can easily swap them out in your camera and get right back out on track. Another issue we run into at the track really frequently is card space. Now, if you've got a 16 gig or a 32 gig card, then you already know that sometimes it's hard to get all of your sessions on a single SD card. And the last thing you wanna be doing at track is fumbling for another card, swapping the cards out, which means you could potentially lose one of the cards because they're so small, and you have to spend that time stressing out 
about getting another card in, not to mention if your card runs out during a session, you're gonna lose that footage. And the way I fixed that problem is I got 64 gig SanDisk Extreme micro SD cards for all the GoPros, and now I can fit every single session, even for a two day event, on a single card. I never have to worry about swapping cards out or losing footage because the camera stopped rolling during a session. And ultimately, it's just one less thing that I have to worry about during the day. Number three, camera placement. Now camera placement is super important and it's often really overlooked, but camera placement's literally what you're gonna see in your video, so you can't overlook that. And this is where being prepared and setting your cameras up the night before is vital to getting a good camera angle. Now what are some of the key things to placing your camera in your car? Well, this breaks down into two categories. And the first one we're gonna do is hard mounting your camera into your car. Now, first and foremost, you wanna be able to see the entire cabin. Now that includes the shifter, the handbrake, and the steering wheel. But most importantly, and this one is super overlooked, you wanna be able to see out the windows. Unfortunately, this is something that I see a lot in onboard videos where people don't know exactly how to position their camera and they're either seeing all ceiling or their camera is physically too low and all they're seeing is cabin and they can't see out the windows. What happens is it makes it really disorienting and you can't see where your car is in space and therefore you're not really getting the most out of your GoPro. Now this is why I recommend getting a newer GoPro that has Wi-Fi capability where you can preview the image on your smartphone in the GoPro app. So how do you set the camera up properly in the car? So the key here is you want to mix between being able to see the cabin, so that's the shift knob, the e-brake, and your hands on the steering wheel, and you want to be able to see outside. I think a general rule of thumb is you want to be able to see the horizon through the windshield. If you can see the cabin and you can see the horizon outside, you're golden. All right, now hard mounting your camera into your car is super easy if you have a roll cage or a roll bar. And I use these RAM mounts, which are super sturdy and they're really easy to use. And honestly, they're a lot better than the stock GoPro mounts. And all these take to adjust, they're first of all, they're super adjustable. You can do whatever you want with these. And once you kind of have your camera into place, all you have to do is tighten this knob and once it's cranked down, this mount is super sturdy. Now point of view driving videos can really put you right in the action, but helmets are really tricky to rig and sometimes it's really easy to put the camera too high and too low. One of the most frequent helmet cams is the chin cam where you put the camera right on the bottom of your chin here and you kind of get a really cool shot of your hands and your steering wheel. But the problem is the camera is too low for you to be able to see out the windshield and you can't actually see where the car is. Another thing that's easy to do with the helmet cam is mounting the camera too high and then all you see is your ceiling. Now regardless of where you want to put your camera on your helmet, your camera has to be as close to eye level as possible. So that means if you're gonna mount your camera on the front, you should try to mount it as high up as possible. So what your camera sees is as close as what your eye sees as possible, which is gonna be the track and the horizon, but also your controls. And of course, you're not gonna see as much because the camera is further forward now, but at least you're gonna be able to see wherever your helmet sees, and you're gonna have a better sense of orientation that's gonna be closer to what your eyes see. So whether you mount your camera to the side of your helmet or the front, make sure it's as close to eye level as you can possibly get it. Number four, camera settings. Now that we've placed the cameras in the car or mounted them to your helmet, let's dive into the settings and see what we can do to get the best possible results out of your GoPro. All right, so to dive into the settings on the GoPro 5, we're gonna first pull out the lens cap, and we're gonna go ahead and make sure the camera's powered on. Place it here. Next, we're gonna go ahead and launch the GoPro app. All right, now this is what makes the GoPros with Wi-Fi capability really nice, is that you can preview the frame on your phone so you can make sure you're getting the best possible angle in your car. But now that we've got this launched, we're gonna wanna go ahead and dive into our settings. Now here's some of the settings that I use for our videos. First of all, we shoot everything in 1080p. There's no need for 4K unless you're doing something specific or you really want it in 4K, usually 1080p is fine. Now, frames per second, some people get really confused on this. Most stuff you see on TV is either at 24 or 30 frames. Anything above that is gonna be shooting it at high speed in case you wanna do slow motion. But I think for in-car stuff, technically, you're really not gonna want slow motion. Unless in the event of a crash, you're gonna wanna be able to slow it down later. But um, otherwise, you're gonna be dealing with a lot more data and bigger file sizes, which is gonna fill your memory card up a lot quicker. And uh, we just don't do it. All right, so next up is our field of view. And in field of view, we have options for super view, wide, medium, linear, and narrow. Now, I really only flip between super view and wide. Anything from medium to narrow 
is gonna be a very tight shot and you're not gonna see much of the cabin. Matter of fact, you're only gonna see out the windows and it's really not that useful if you wanna see what's going on inside the car. So really choose between super view and wide. Super view is really, really wide and can get really disorienting, but if you wanna maybe have a little bit of glimpse out the side windows, you can choose to use super view if you want. All right, so next up is Protune and Protune gives you a lot more adjustability to your GoPro, so I always recommend turning that on. The big one to play with here is EV Comp, which is exposure compensation. Here's why this is really important. When you put the GoPro in your car and now you can see in the cabin and you can see out the windows, your windows are gonna look white and you're not gonna be able to see anything outside the windows. All you're gonna see is inside the cabin. And that's because your GoPro is gonna want to expose to inside the car. Here's the trick and here's what I do for all of my in-car stuff is I take this exposure compensation slider, slide that all the way left so it says minus two stops. What that's gonna do is that's gonna lower the exposure of the camera and it's gonna make it so outside is properly exposed and actually inside the car is also gonna be properly exposed. It may be a little bit on the dark side, but trust me, for the most part, it's gonna look perfect. All right, and that pretty much wraps it up as far as camera settings go. Last but not least, number five, conserve your resources. When you're at a track, you're not gonna have access to a computer to download your cards, and you're not gonna have access to outlets to charge your batteries easily. And the best way to overcome this is to use your resources sparingly, and that is power and card space. Now there are a couple ways that you can easily conserve your resources, number one being, don't turn your GoPros on too early. It wastes a lot of battery when your GoPro is on while you're putting on your helmet, you're putting on your racing gloves, you're closing your doors, putting on your seat belts, roll out of the pits, get to the grid, get onto the track, it could be 10 minutes before you start your first run that your camera is using all that power to be on. Now at the same time, this also means don't start recording on your GoPros too early. Don't record all that dead time of you putting on your helmet and putting on your gloves and all that stuff because really, that's just wasted card space. And also, you're not gonna wanna go through all that wasted footage on the computer. You're gonna want it to be straight to the point. And all that just takes up extra space that's gonna go onto your hard drives that then you're gonna have to deal with in the long run. So make sure you're using your batteries and your card space really sparingly. Now one of the easiest ways to do that for us is to use something like a GoPro Hero 5 or Hero 6 that have voice command built in. I can do all the tasks that I need to do to get up to the starting grid and once I'm ready to do my run, it's as simple as saying, GoPro, start recording. All right, and just like that, it's that easy. Now I can drive my entire session. I don't have to worry about fumbling the camera. I don't have to worry about looking at the red light and making sure it's recording. I can drive my whole session, and then as I'm pulling off track and I'm all done, all I have to say is GoPro stop recording, and then GoPro power off. Now the camera's completely off, it's already stopped recording, I don't have to touch it, and just by the beeps, I already know that the camera's off and I don't have to worry about any of that. So that really helps with managing your resources as far as yourself, and managing your resources as far as your card space and your battery life. All right guys, well there it is, our top five tips and tricks to getting better onboard GoPro footage starting your next event. Now we wanna hear from you. What are some of your tips and tricks to getting good video at track? Or maybe if you aren't, we hope this video at least inspires you to start recording your track sessions so you can get better as a driver faster. Now again, I'm gonna be linking some of the accessories we use in our kit to produce our videos in the description down below, so don't forget to check those out. Well guys, if you found this video interesting or informative in any way, do us a big favor, smash that like button down below, and we look forward to seeing all your awesome onboard videos. All right guys, thanks for watching.